Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you'll never cease to grow. I agree with that. I think that's a true statement. It's always nice to find rooms to grow. All right, coding principles and data manipulation. So some of us already know a lot of the stuff, but at the same time, it's nice to get a review. Something that you might not necessarily be aware of is that you can actually comment out comment within your um, code just so that you can annotate what you're doing so that when you come back to it at a later time it makes sense um, so a little fun fact um, let's just go ahead and continue so data with computers so automatically we've already been working with some of these things but now I'm actually going to formalize some definitions this idea of a function within the computer or at least when programming um, allows us to do a particular task. So abs, ABS is the absolute value. So it's going to take the absolute value of the negative 49 and SQRT is the square root function that just, just takes the square root of a number or numbers as you'll see in a little bit. The reason why I wanted to formulate this definition of a function is so that we can talk about this idea of a vector. Okay, so a vector just consists of elements of the same type. Now we can connect some strings, right? Or connect some dots. So what I mean by that is things that are numeric are things that are numeric. Um, we can combine them into a vector, or things that are strings, you can combine them into a vector. Um, and so the function for that is something called C. And so in the back of your mind, like this vector C. How does that connect? C stands for combination or uh, sorry combine um come to find out if you actually put a number within a bunch of strings it turns it into a string and so know that i'm using single quotes here i could have used double quotes that's neither here nor there with that being said i can also store a vector or store a vector into some variable i know variable is a terminology that we've used in some in terms of the statistics, but um, this is another um, variable, another um, notion of a variable where we can actually store this information within the environment. So let's go ahead and try that out. Okay, we made it to R. And so what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna create a new R chunk, paste this here, and I'm saying that numbers and strings, what I wanna be able to do is gain access to them at a different time. So like what I mean by that is a different time is if I was open up console now and I just say, you know, numbers, I'm able to gain access to that information outside of um, when I first defined it, defined it. So that's actually really, really nice, okay? Um, when it comes to vectors, we can actually store vectors in a series or a collection of vectors. And what that really is, is just a data frame. So let's go ahead and just jump to data frame. So here we go. So a data frame allows us to store vectors of the same length together. Um, if you don't, if they're not the same length, it's going to throw an error. Um, so here, this is one. This is the same information. We can actually store this information as a data frame, okay? Um, and then here we can go ahead and save data frame, save the data frame into some some um, variable. The issue with this is that when it comes to being organized, um, I don't like just saying fillings, or even when we go back to posit, I'm gonna go there in a second. Uh, I would even argue when we go here, I would say this is pretty bad. I would want to be as specific as possible just so that when I read the code again, it makes sense. Okay, so these are vectors. Create a new R chunk. This is a data frame. I'll say fillings. Maybe I'll give it fillings. It's maybe sad. I guess passion is a feeling too. Um, and so, yeah, so that is that. And so when I run this, you see that we now have a data frame. Okay, so technically we've gone over data frames before, but this is a way of 
creating your own data frames rather than just extracting data data from different um, websites or getting it from Spotify. Okay, so let's continue. I got ahead of myself. Why don't you all take some time and actually answer these questions on your own and let's see how you all perform. Okay, so we're asked to create a vector name, family name, the members with the following values, dad, mom, brother, cousin, and aunt. Make sure you use quotes, not these particular quotes because there's a different version of quotes, but if you just type, if you just use the single quotes, you should be fine. So let's show my answer. And so it should look something like this. Even if you use double quotes, it should be fine. Okay, so then you can create a vector named family ages with the following vector 42, 37, 76, 34. Okay, again, it's using this function C. My apologies for not highlighting that last time. You're going to use this function C for combined. Um, what function do you think you would use to get the mean of family ages? Wow, this is a huge hint. It's the answer. Use mean. Of family ages and then in the computer what type of variable is family ages what about family members um this will be treated as a what if we said categorical that's good and if you said quantitative that's even better that's great okay oh in the computer oh i was wrong oh look at that <laughs> in the computer it's treated as an integer and then um family members is treated as a string okay so let's continue on some more questions yes yeah, so what's the biggest difference between a vector and a data frame um combine family ages and family members into a, a data frame name it family info df okay so the biggest difference between a vector and a data frame is that vectors just hold one variable whereas data frames can hold more than one variable um combining combining the information into a data frame. Watch how I do this. So I know we did it one way in R, utilizing this functionality, right? That we're defining it within the data frame. But in this particular situation, we already have family ages and family members already defined. So I can just look, um, write it out like that. Okay, and that will work. Okay, so please be aware of that. All right, switching it up, list. So to give you a recap, we first start off with vectors. Okay, it's just one variable. Data frames that has multiple variables, okay? Multiple vectors. And then finally, list. And list, if you're familiar with Python, is completely different from list and Python. So our, Python, our list is very different from Python list. So list at the end of the day allows you to store all the types of information into one entity. Meaning that I can have vectors, data frames, another data frame, another list within it. Okay. So what I mean by that, let's, let's look at an example. So I have a vector, fruit names, number of calories for the fruit. I turn it into a data frame. Fantastic. I can store all this information in to a, to a list. So let's actually do that. I'm actually going to copy and paste this information. Go to R. Okay. We're having fun. Okay. Then I'm going to run this. Okay. So if you look at it, list currently has three elements. Okay. Let's click on that just so you can see. It has a data frame it has a vector that's a double a double at the end of the day is um it's a number that has decimals in it and i guess that's what they're um counting that as so this is a double and then this is character okay such as a string we mentioned that last time and so what's interesting is that if you want to get the data frame out that'll give you the information it's a third element Oh, actually, this is not going to be the data frame. This is going to be the fruit names. So if I run this, I should get the fruit names. Okay. But if I want to get the data frame, ideally, I should use which index? 
I should use one. So make sure you're aware of that of the index. Okay. Um, okay. Let's continue. Technically, we already answered this question. Is extracting the third element from the um, from the list. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just mention, at least teach you beyond the notes, is that we can utilize this function called names. And let's say it's called it's called fruits. Not for example, but fruits list. And again, I've named it list because it's a list. I want to do that intentionally. And then I'm going to say C. I'm going to call this the date data frame. Um, cow. Put this in single quote. Sorry, cow. Vec, and then another comma. Name. Vec. And so what this does, it actually names the elements within the data frame. Uh, we could say this is fruit. Okay. And so if I go back here to the list, I'm gonna exit out and just click on it again so you can see it. When I go back to the list, it actually has the names of the elements. Okay. That's that's you, you'll see how that could be nice when it comes to gaining access to certain pieces of information. All right. So with that being said, um, let's go back to the question. Another question says, combine the family ages and family members of vectors from earlier today into a list, compare it to the family info DF, and what do you see? Um, and so this is a little bit different. Let's actually, I'm gonna run it myself. Give me a second. So in that second question, what it's asking you to do is to take these two vectors, right? And then instead of storing it into a data frame, it's going to store it into a list. So family info list, log one, family info list. Okay, it just stores it together. And the thing that was nice about this, can anyone guess what's good about this now compared to, compared to a data frame? The thing is in this situation now, they don't have to be the same length. Okay, so let me just give you an example. So if I were to say 37, let's say for an additional person, I'm not gonna get an error. But watch, if I turn this into, I do family info, this is now a DF, a data frame, call this data dot frame. You see, I get an error. Okay, like I got to mention before that it needs to be the same length. So be aware of that, all right? So are we ready to continue? I think we are. Actually, I'm done with this video. We're gonna meet up in the next video, all right?